Good evening. I'm Brittany Babin. Coming up in tonight's newscast, we will have Kutztown University hosting a job and internship fair, Jennifer Posner speaking about violence, and the Military Club hosting their second annual 5K on campus. We also have Tom Mergen with a story on the San Jose Taiko Japanese Drum Ensemble. And I'm George Flavin with your Kutztown University sports update. Along later, we'll see Katie Pressler having her Hollywood Minute. And I'm Josh Watkins with your Kutztown weather forecast. News break begins now. Last Thursday, Newsbreak aired a story that was from last year. On behalf of everyone here at Newsbreak, we are very sorry. Mr. KU was hosted by Alpha, Tau, Alpha Sigma Tau last week. S tickets were $5 and all proceeds went to the Pine State Settlement School. Newsbreak's own Brady Gallagher has her story. Dressed all in black, Alpha Sigma Tau hosted their 8th annual Mr. Kutztown pageant where seven KU contestants vied for the crown. We always have a bunch of, we always have a good amount of guys coming out, but we do their entrance and then we do their um, swimwear. And if swimwear wasn't enough, the night also consisted of a talent portion. Which included rapping, singing, guitar and drum solos, and much more. And then we do the formal wear, where they'll come out with their escorts again, and then... Um, we do questions, which they're usually like funny questions I have set up for them. Why don't she shrink when it rains? And the entrances, talents, and questions all led up to the crowning of this year's Mr. Kutztown. Uh, I feel very excited. Honestly, I was not expecting to win because I wasn't entering the province until like 8.30 last night. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll do it, you know. And uh, I wanted to kind of defend the crown for Captain Singer, so I'm glad I did that. It was a great turnout here tonight. Good fun, good music, good looking men, and a great time all around. From the Schaefer Auditorium, I'm Brady Gallagher, reporting for Newsbreak. And now we are going to send it over to Katie for this week's Hollywood Minute. Thanks, Brittany. Last night was the roast of Justin Bieber on Comedy Central. If you tuned in to watch or weren't able to see it, I have seven things that you didn't see on TV. First, the only nervous person during the roast was his mother, Patty. She told reporters as a mom, no mom wants to see their kid get roasted. When jokingly asked what she would roast her son about, she said for him to pull up those pants. Unlike his mom, Justin seemed very calm and in a great mood before taping. He was taking pictures on the red carpet with his friends, Blake Anderson and Adam Devine from Workaholics. After host Kevin Hart opened the show and Pete Davidson from Saturday Night Live started the roast, he joked about Justin Bieber and his speeding habits, bringing up edgy jokes about Paul Walker. Not only did Pete joke about Paul, but Jeff Ross also made a joke about Paul Walker that was banned for the obscenities. Martha Stewart made an appearance and was talking about the possibilities of his Calvin Klein underwear ads being photoshopped. She said she had some questions for him. Snoop Dogg made an appearance as well at the red carpet as well. And was, he was asked um, how he prepared for the big night. And he responded saying smoking a lot of marijuana. And our last and final thing not seen on television was Snoop Dogg talking about a collab with Bieber. He said he wasn't big enough and wasn't on his level yet. You can check out The Roast Yourself on Comedy Central's website. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to the desk. So George, did you watch The Roast on Bieber last night? I did not watch The Roast on Bieber last night, but I'm sure it was absolutely hysterical. Yeah, you have to check out Martha Stewart's roast. <laughs> and when we, ch when we come back after these messages, we'll have your weather update. Hey, I'm Tom Mergen here at Schaefer Auditorium. San Jose Tycho is playing tonight. I'll have the whole story later on Newsbreak. Now, I was in Atlanta this past week, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I could wear shorts. I could wear, you know, T-shirts. But how's it been in the uh, frozen tundra for you? Well, it's pretty cold here, but I was in Florida for spring break, so I know the feeling. <laughs> So what's our weather update for this week? Just keep bragging about that good weather, guys. Don't worry. I'll be fine here where it's cold and wet. How's it going, guys? Josh Watkins bringing you your weather forecast. Today's weather was less than pleasant. It was rainy, it was snowy, and it was cold. That's the big three right there. And it's going to continue into tonight. 
Tomorrow we're looking at a pretty nice weather forecast though, 50 down to about 34 with sun and a few clouds. Looking at the week ahead though, Thursday we're looking for a high of 64, going down to 50, so it's going to be a really nice day out. Maybe that'll finally be the start of where spring is. Friday we're going to have some rain, but the temperature still should be pretty warm. Saturday and Sunday are going to be a pretty good weekend. Nice Easter Sunday, nice Easter Monday as well. Temperatures are going to be sticking around high 50s to down to about the high 40s. It should be a great weekend. That's it for your weather forecast. Back to you guys at the news desk. The Kutztown University Internship and Job Fair will be held tomorrow, Wednesday, April 1st from 12 to 3 p.m. 61 employers are currently registered to attend and will be seeking applicants from all majors. Students are expected to dress professionally and bring their resumes. This is a great opportunity for all students looking for a summer internship or even graduating and looking for a job. Tomorrow night, Jennifer Posner, a media critic and anti-violence journalist, will speak about violence towards women and men. The event will start with an introduction of Kutztown University's new campaign, It's On Us, which is a national pledge and educational campaign aimed at recognizing that non-consensual sex is sexual assault, identifying situations in which sexual assault may occur, and intervening in situations where consent has not or cannot be given. This event will take place in the Schaefer Auditorium at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. This Saturday, April 4th, Kutztown's own military club will be hosting their second annual 5K race on campus. All the proceeds from this event will go to the Keystone Wounded Warriors, a charitable organization which supports disabled veterans who are from the state of Pennsylvania. Registration will begin at 8 a.m. and the start of the race will be at 10.30. It is $28 to run, $30 on race day, $20 per person for a team of five or more. Those who want to support and donate but do not wish to run or walk in the event, donations can be made on their GoFundMe website or in person on race day. Last Thursday was a San Jose Takeo Japanese drum show. Newsbreak's own Tom Mergen has the story. Schaefer Auditorium was the host for San Jose Takeo Drums this past Thursday. The drum show was the latest production by KU Presents. San Jose Taiko, we're a group um, that started in 1973, and the founders at the time, they chose the Japanese drum, or the Taiko, as a way to express who they were as Asian Americans, as Japanese Americans. So they wanted to take inspiration from Japan, but not be a carbon copy of the Taiko drumming groups in Japan. So they created their own style here in North America, in, in San Jose. We are very excited about this show coming to our stage. We've had Tycho here before, but we have absolutely sold out and our audiences enjoy it. So we're happy to have San Jose Tycho as they're swinging around on their East Coast dates, make Schaefer Auditorium one of their stops. Our style in particular involves a lot of choreography along with the powerful drumming and, um, yeah, and the energy that comes with that. From Schaefer Auditorium, I'm Tom Mergen, reporting for Newsbreak. So George, did you see the drum performance? I did not. I, I think I haven't seen anything. I've been <laughs> doing too much work with all my schoolwork, honestly. Yeah, you keep missing all the good shows. Yeah, it's all of Professor Neal's video fundamental <laughs> class that I had to do a test today for. Anyway, when we come back, I'll have an update on KU Sports. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Newsbreak. The KU men's baseball team split their doubleheader with Mansfield University. The men won 5-2 but dropped the second game 7-6 in 14 innings. Left-hander Paul Piramali led the Golden Bears, who are now 11-7 overall, 3-7 in the PSAC East, to win their 5-2 victory in Game 1. In the, and Piramali had his first complete game of his career. He struck out a career-high 11 batters with no walks. Piramali is now 3-1 this season. Brady McNabb found his sweet spot because he went the distance for his first home run of his career. McNabb is now batting 458 and he is third in the PSAC in batting average. The women's golf team finished ninth at the NCK 4K College Classic in Black Lake, Ohio. Madison Hosill and Madison Beer each dropped eight strokes off their first day scores to Lee Kutztown on Monday with 81s and they joined 
Hope Giornadano as KU's top finishing trio on the par 72 course. The Golden Bears will now hit the links on their home course when they will face and host annual KU Spring Invitational at Berkeley Golf Club on Saturday, April 11th. Do you know Perez? Joan Oval Oliver Perez, that is. Well, he's kind of a big deal on the tennis team now. Perez went undefeated all of last week, and the man is only a freshman. Perez helped clinch a 5-4 victory over Westchester last week to earn him the PSAC Athlete of the Week award. It is his first accolade since joining the Golden Bears. And we're sure there are many more to come from this freshman phenom. An update on the KU D2 National Champion Ziad Haddad. After defending his D2 championship, Haddad can add another accolade to his illustrious career. The wrestler has been named to the Region 1 Wrestler of the Year for the second straight year in a row. Now that's all that I have for you tonight, guys, but log on to KUBears.com and check back again Tuesday night to stay updated on everything Kutztown Athletics. That's all we have for you tonight. We will see you again on Thursday. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to keep up to date with upcoming Kutztown news. As for Katie, Josh, and the rest of the crew, good, good night. night.